Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. I'm joined again by a two-time Pro Bowl long snapper who spent 14 seasons in the NFL and is a world-class magician that's also appeared on America's Got Talent. He covers all that and more in his new book, Life is Magic, My Inspiring Journey from Tragedy to Self-Discovery. John Dornboss, we spent yesterday talking a lot about the tragedy that's happened in your life. Um, one of the ways that you overcame it was magic. Uh, and it turns out that Magic made it helped you even a little bit when you got your scholarship to UTEP. By the way that you made your highlight yeah, tape, yeah. What, did, what did you do? All right, so I thought I was a really good high school player, no scholarships. So uh, Golden West Junior College was right down the road. My friend had played there that I played high school ball. He's my best friend, Paul Tessier. And they were 0-30, which means they hadn't won a game in three years. So my rationale was if I can't play here, hang it up, right, if you can't play there. So I go and I play there, and I thought I did really well, no scholarships. The team went 0-10, which means they were now 0-40. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of guys getting recruited out of school that has the longest losing streak in college football history. Uh, so I put a highlight tape together, and my highlight tape was good. Like, I, had, I was a good player, right? But, you know, I had this guy, Nick Heinley, who's a great friend of mine, and he, we rotated, and he just destroyed people. Like, I'm talking, to date, probably the hardest hitter I've ever seen in my life. So I just kind of borrowed some of his hard hits and just put them on my tape. And back then, it was VHS, so it was like... You'd hit play, pause, record. You'd have two cables or be some white fuzz. You borrowed. No, I, I borrowed. And, and like, there's no HD. There's no internet. Yeah, so like, you can't tell. And then there's this other guy, Tim Thurman. And Tim Thurman was a 6'8 long snapper. I'm not, I'm six foot. This guy was 6'8. And he was the guy that would, a long snapper. Like, yeah. He'd throw the ball back to the kicker, right? So I was like, I mean, he's really good. I'll just take some of his snaps and just. So I had some of my long snaps from high school and I was okay. Then I had my highlights from junior college. Then I put some of Nick's hard hits and just a couple of Tim Thurman snapping. Perfect. And I just sent it out. And so my buddy Paul was at UTEP. Coaches got it. They needed a long snapper. So they're like, this is perfect. You know this kid? Paul's like, yeah, he's a good player. Yeah. So they brought me in. I did the interview process. It was all good. And they gave me a full ride to be their long snapper. <laughs> did they ever realize that your video was not years all later, you? Years later. Well, look, I del here's the bottom line. I knew I could do it. I, I did. I, I knew I could do it. I just had to get in the door. And that was my way in the door. And I didn't really think anything of it back then. I just was taking a shot on myself. It worked. It worked. So I thought this was really interesting. Your pro day at UTEP, you had the fastest snap time, and it was faster than the, at the time, average in the NFL. Yeah, I got lucky. Oh, you got lucky? I was throwing some heat that day. <laughs> oh, that was just a good day. <laughs> I, uh, no, I, I, yeah. yeah. Well, I, you're I obviously really good at it. Yeah. Did you know then that you would eventually be in the NFL? Well, so that, that was the defining moment where I was like, I, I can do this, mm -hmm. right? But they say that getting to the NFL is the easy part, and it's really hard. Staying is the hard part. Yeah. And when I got in the NFL, my first few years were not good. Like, I was not a, I was not a good player. Like, I, it was just, one, I, I got signed by the Buffalo Bills, which is really cold. Yeah. And for a Southern California kid who had seen snow, but not, like, seen snow, uh -huh. uh, it, was, it was a hard adjustment for me. I'm sure. What is, a, what is it like, the, the week... The week of a long snapper, because it's not the most glamorous NFL position. No, no, but it, but it's it's great because you still reap all the benefits. Yeah. Right. And, and at that time, that position had just become its own position, which mm -hmm. means uh, they limited you to what they wanted you to do because you were the only guy on the team that could do that specialty, which means if you get hurt, there's nobody else. Oh, so you didn't have to take hits in practice. M much less than other people. Okay. Because they're trying to limit you getting hurt. Like when it's go time and you're actually working at your specific job, then yeah, you're going, like you're getting hit. But other than that, it's like the kicker. Like it's just, there's no reason to keep hitting this guy and, and having a chance of him get hurt. That's I'll awesome. Take, well, you got the best. I'll take it. Of the NFL. Sounds I like. I mean, it's hard. I mean, it's a hard, it, the guys on TV make it look really easy, but after living it as long as I did, and now that I'm out, it's, it's a really hard position. It's yeah. cutthroat. You mess up once, you're done. Um, so during training camp in 2017, the Eagles wound up trading you to the Saints. The Saints did a physical on you, and then they found that you had an aortic aneurysm. I mean, you'd, you've had some tough times throughout and, your life. Yeah, and, and this was right after I'd just broken a I just tied the record for most consecutive games ever played as yeah. an Eagle. So when they told me they were going to trade me, I was kind of like, I, I thought I was like Mr. Eagle, right? Um, and it was, it was that moment where kind of my life, every time something happens in my life, I feel like there's something in my life from my past that's helped me get to that moment. Mm -hmm. And that was a moment where the owner of the Eagles called me and said, hey, if you want to stay, you're going to stay. What do you want to do? And I go, you know what? If it's my time, I'm okay with it. So sure enough, they traded me to New Orleans um, and I, I, took, I played in a game. The next day I took my physical. Uh, I, I always wondered when a doctor puts a stethoscope and you go... <laughs> 
like, well, like what are we doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Doc, what are you doing? So he, he heard a murmur, which means there's a leakage of blood somewhere. Right. And so when he when you put a stethoscope on your chest and you go, <gasps> he's listening for a drum, like a heart. Well, if there's a squish sound, whoosh, that's yeah. blood leaking somewhere. So he heard that. I went down to the hospital. I had tests done. And then I found out that I had uh, a severely leaky valve, which means I had a lot of blood leaking out of my heart. And that I had an aneurysm in the aorta, which is the vein that leaves the heart. Uh, that thing should be about the size of a dime or a nickel. And mine had blown up to be about the size of a Coke can. And if that thing pops like a water balloon, like imagine the vein in your arm being the size of a Coke can. If that thing pops like a water balloon, you're, you're dead instantly. And so I was one hit away f from like getting hit in the chest to probably John Ritter, Alan Thicke, Bill Paxton. These are all guys that had that condition that died of either from the condition or a complication of surgery due to it. So it was really a blessing that you got traded and then you had that. Yeah. Best thing ever happened to me. Wow. Uh, you were not with the Eagles when they won the Super no. Bowl, but they still gave you a ring. They did. What did that mean to you? Uh, so I'd been there 11 years, and I mm -hmm. played in every game, right? And so they traded me. And when this whole thing went down, the owner called me and said, hey, man, you, you've been a part of this team for a long time, and you helped shape this culture, and uh, we love you like family. And if we win, we're going to give you a ring. Now, look, I'm on 21 pills, so I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. Thanks a lot. Just call me. Call me. And sure enough, when they went to the NFC Championship game, they called me and said, hey, we're flying, you to, we're flying you to Minnesota. You're gonna sit in the owner suite with us and you're a part of this. And if Aww. we win, we're not gonna give you a ring, but we're gonna give you a player's ring because you deserve it. Aww, and I was I like, it. so they win and they give me one. And Jeff Lurie, the owner, uh, he said, hey, this ring, when you look at it, I know you didn't play, but this ring for you is life. And every time you look at this, just remember how much hard work you put into this. Remember how much you love to be alive. And the Super Bowl for you, kid, is just your life. And I'm like, you know what? I mean, I, I got choked up, and um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm one of, th I'm three things, which I'm proud to say. Okay. I'm a part of the longest losing streak in college football history <laughs> at Golden West Junior College. I believe I'm the first long snapper ever traded for a draft pick, <laughs> and I've never heard of a guy getting traded and then getting a Super Bowl ring from his past team from a season he didn't play. I'm all three, baby. Yes. Check out our YouTube channel, Fair Game on FS1, to catch all the best highlights of our show. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.